it's hard to describe today the power of, uh, of the radio in 1946. There was really, for all practical purposes, no television. And, and over 90% of American households had radios. Orson Welles uh, in 1946 was already a legend. He had, as a, uh, a man in his early 20s, um, uh, broadcast on radio the War of the Worlds. And though there were frequent um, uh, interruptions indicating that this was fiction, the, um, his command, his voice, his intonation was so dramatic and so effective that many people thought that Martians were invading the United States and it created um, hysteria across the country. A few years later, still not yet 30, he directed Citizen Kane, um, which many believe to this day to be the greatest movie ever made. Uh, he was a person of extraordinary talents and he had in 1946 a radio program uh, called Orson Welles Commentaries and um, despite its high sounding name it was uh, a radio program it was on ABC radio in sort of search of an audience and he was trying to speak about matters of current public concern to, to stir controversy and to build an audience. Uh, he was also known as a friend of the Civil Rights Movement. So soon after the story of Isaac Woodard came to the attention of Walter White, the Executive Secretary of the NAACP, he wrote a hand-delivered note to Orson Welles telling him the story of the blinding of, of Isaac Woodard and told him that though the NAACP had seen, seen many terrible cases in, it, in its, over its history, this was among the worst. The story also recounted that the person who had attacked and blinded Isaac Woodard was not yet identified. Orson Welles immediately appreciated the drama of this story, particularly the whodunit quality. Uh, uh, within days, literally days, of receiving this letter, his national radio broadcast, which was a weekly broadcast on a Sunday, opened with the story of the blinding of Isaac Woodard. Good morning, this is Orson Welles speaking. I'd like to read to you an affidavit. I, Isaac Woodward, Jr., being duly sworn to depose and state as follows. And the policeman struck me with a billy across my head and told me to shut up. I started to get up. He started punching me in my eyes with the end of the billy. When I finally got up, he pushed me inside the jailhouse and locked me up. Uh, in a matter of weeks, an another Woodward-related broadcast was on uh, Orson Welles' show. And there he identified the name of Linwood Shaw as the perpetrator of the blinding of Isaac Woodard. It, it was, it created a national sensation. The unparalleled talent of Orson Welles, the story of the blinding of Isaac Woodard captured the nation. There were mass meetings in African-American communities across America. The NAACP sponsored a uh, speaking tour for Sergeant Woodard that went to dozens of cities. And uh, a um, benefit concert held in New York City uh, uh, for uh, uh, Sergeant Woodard uh, was co-chaired by Joe Lewis, then the world heavyweight champion, and um, featured performances by um, many prominent African-American stars of that day, including Nat King Cole and Cab Calloway and sold out a football stadium of 23,000 people. It was a national sensation. Uh, today, that, the story of, of Sergeant Woodard has been long forgotten, but in 1946, there was probably not a better known uh, man in the black community in America than Isaac Woodard.